I think what really will propel these metals higher, first of all, is going to be demand. And second of all, it's going to be servicing the debt that we have incurred. It's huge. Physical silver and gold in your hands. Personal service, competitive prices, and zero complaints. That's Miles Franklin. Call us at 1-800-822-8080 or email us at info at milesfranklin.com. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with the Miles Franklin Market Update. And with us today is Gary Wagner from thegoldforecast.com. Gary, thank you so much for joining us today. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's great to have you. And yeah, one of the topics I'd love to discuss, because you're you know one of the, uh, the main people who does gold forecasting, you know, and um, what I've really been interested in recently is I've been hearing from so many different people that with the silver market, it seems like it could be ready to take off. This could be the moment if we get above $30. What is your take? What are you seeing right now? Well, first of all, short term, when you compare it to gold, unlike gold, which is trading below the 50, 100, and 200-day moving averages, um, silver has, for the most part, remained even above the 50. Now it is just below the 50, which is where I am earmarking uh, current resistance, short-term resistance. And it did actually trade for a bit today uh, below the 100-day, but closed above it. As for the $30 mark, the interesting thing is when gold made a new record high back in August of last year, that's kind of the top we saw in silver. And I thought that that was kind of odd in that the sister metal, which is what we call silver, uh, typically will trade in tandem and on the way up will outperform gold. In this case, it didn't. So that is definitely a hard resistance line. And I believe that if it can be taken out on a closing basis, we could see a move and a substantial move. But that is still a couple of dollars away from now. And long term, absolutely. Short term, we're in a very, very defined narrow range and choppy market. Do you see much downside for silver right now? You know, there's always the potential for downside in silver or gold. And the way I look at that is, especially if you're buying physical, uh, it, it presents a great opportunity. There was a bank that came out today with a forecast for gold saying that it might close out at the end of the year at around 1675, 1680, which is the lows that we hit before the rally began. And I would look at that as a, a true opportunity. If gold does do that, we could see a little weakness in silver. However, with all of the fundamentals at play, I think that there is a lag between the reality of what the government is spending and the price of the safe haven assets. And speaking of that, regarding, you know, what the government is spending right now, it is really interesting how, you know, the COVID, the first COVID stimulus was the biggest stimulus package ever, right? And then we just keep getting these new stimulus packages and the latest one, you know, $1.9 trillion and Biden even wants more stimulus, right? So why isn't this having more of an impact on inflation and raising precious metal prices even higher? Well, you know, there is inflation. I think that um, in, in, in that regard, the numbers that were being given that were, you know, floating under 2% might not be realistic if you go to the supermarket or the gas station. But as you pointed out, and it's an excellent point, we spent $4 trillion last year, largest, largest aid package ever, another $1.9. So now we're up to $6, six trillion additional debt. Now he's considering another three trillion on top of that. So that's nine trillion dollars in the last two years, which is adding to a national debt that has just swelled to an enormous amount. At the same time, you've got the Federal Reserve holding interest rates down, and I believe they'll keep them there. But we've had Treasury yields. They went down a little today, part moving up in the opposite direction that you would expect. And really what happens is when you get interest rates that are low or going down, that really pressures the dollar lower. A lower dollar means higher metals. Obviously, there's a one-to-one -one relationship since we pair it against that. So 
whether it's going to take time to catch up or whether this economic scenario that really started after World War II, where we spend more money than we have, how that unravels is going to be interesting. Another thing you want to consider about interest rates is with this huge national debt that we have to service the interest payments on, interest rates going up will really crush the government. I mean, if they went up substantially. You mentioned how the Fed is going to do whatever it takes, you know, to prevent interest rates from rising. But we're already seeing interest rates rising. Right. And I mean, Jerome Powell said last Wednesday that we're going to uh, continue easy money policy for as long as it takes. Right. So they they're just continuing with the amount of asset purchases that they've been doing. But what do you anticipate them doing if interest rates continue to rise? Well, here's the thing. Interest rates on the Federal Reserve level have not risen. They're between the Fed funds rate is between zero and 25 basis points, a quarter percent. When you consider and compare what the Federal Reserve did on this crisis to the last recession, which is the banking crisis, really people and analysts felt that they raised rates too quickly. And that's why I believe that Chairman Powell has been so adamant in saying, we're gonna use everything available and we'll let inflation run hot, but we're not going to raise interest rates just because there's good data. We will raise interest rates when we have that economic recovery. And so I think they have a different mindset. And so what we're seeing is market sentiment shifting as the economy does begin to rebound. And no question, it is in areas rebounding in the United States. Uh, considering Europe, they're in lockdown. Poland's in lockdown. Uh, I believe Germany just went to lockdown. So they're having issues. And so just having America vaccinated is great. But without a global plan to, to vaccinate the citizens of the world, this pandemic could linger for longer than, than anyone considered. And that is the truth and the reality. But market sentiment sees these upticks, sees equities going to new record highs. And so they've been bit, bidding yields up and they're bidding them up against what the Fed is doing. And that's why I think it is unrealistic. So you're saying that the pandemic worldwide could last longer than people are expecting. So are, are, essentially, are you saying that the markets are kind of getting ahead of themselves with respect to that a recovery is around the corner? Well, I, I hope they're not getting ahead of themselves, but I fear that they are because America is not a, a standalone country. We live in a global economy and what affects Europe and Asia affects the United States. We're all together in terms of trading partners. And it is the variants that have brought the greatest concern in Europe right now. We are seeing some real progress here and in Canada, absolutely no doubt. Um, and in different pockets, we're maybe doing it too quickly, like Texas, for example, who's done away with all restrictions, or the massive amounts of people not wearing masks in Miami for spring break. We don't know how that's going to unfold. Will that bring another wave? The key is the vaccine works, one, and they're using it and effectively uh, inoculating more and more people here all the time. And that's where we get a hopeful sign. But it is, I do believe market sentiment is forward thinking right now, maybe getting ahead of where it should be, but they're being optimistic for some genuine data that is out there. Now, getting then back to the precious metal markets, when this whole pandemic started, it was, I guess we first saw a pullback, but then we saw a huge rally in gold and silver. And it seems like the pandemic and, and crises in general are very bullish for precious metals. So with respect to kind of, it seems like maybe a a lingering COVID crisis, lingering COVID pandemic that you see happening, um, how is that going to impact gold and silver? Well, first, uh, what you're, the point you're bringing up is the drop we saw at the beginning of March and then the tremendous uptick we saw as it went to the all-time record highs. I don't think we're going to see that again because that's really when uh, the pandemic became a full-blown or the epidemic became a full-blown pandemic. And we'll see hot spots here and there, 
But for the most part, there is improvement. And what I think is going to cause gold and silver eventually to rise is that to accomplish the task, to vaccinate, to provide aid, to do the infrastructure, is a lot of debt and a lot of money. And at some point, that's going to bring the dollar dramatically lower. And that, of course, would take both gold and silver higher. Now, the timeline between spending this money and having this money really affect the dollar is the unknown. But I think that at some point it has to. At some point, they'll present us with the bill and we're going to have to really do something to get our our tremendous amount of debt back into perspective. And how they'll do that is I'm uncertain because I don't see a clear path to actually paying off this debt. How long will they carry it for and how will that affect the dollar? I don't think that we'll, if we see a run up again and a new all time high, I don't think it will happen this year, but it could very well happen next year or the year after. It's going to be because the dollar is sinking because of the enormous amount of debt. It won't be related to the pandemic, but it will be related to the economic scenario that is an offshoot from the pandemic, the massive amounts of money being spent. So and when you're saying not a new all time high for are you specifically talking about gold or silver as well? Well, I mean, silver didn't reach fifty dollars and yet it did that on two occasions. Uh, The first time was when the Hunt brothers came in. And the second time, of course, is when a gold hit its former all-time high of about 1920. It ran to 50 again. It's still very odd that it ran to 30 instead of at least keeping up with that. So I believe I'm referring to gold specifically, and I think that it will take out this all-time high, but it might take, as I said, towards the end of the year, more likely into next year. And with respect to the markets, right, the gold and silver markets, the, it seems like sometimes people talk about like two different markets. There's the paper market and the physical market. And I know we've seen with the whole silver squeeze thing about a month and a half ago, there was so much demand for physical metal that it drove up the premiums on, you know, the coin, the smaller coins and bars just to, you know, maybe $10 over the spot price. So what is your perspective on the different dynamics we're going to see in the physical versus the paper, gold and silver markets? They are two different markets. And and your point is an excellent one. Um, There was a shortage of being able to supply coins and bars to the public uh, just a few months ago. And the premiums did They shot up not only that, but in many cases, there were certain ones that were unavailable. And so the dynamics of actually minting and producing these coins and keeping a bid ask spread that's reasonable between the spot price of silver and what a one ounce round cost, for example, uh, became really unrealistic because the demand was there. The supply had dwindled. In the futures market or the electronically traded funds, it is paper. And because it is paper, although they're matching it, they're not holding the exact amount in their warehouses that match precisely the number, the open interest in contracts and futures. With the ETFs, it is also the same. They're, They're hedging in the futures market. So they are two different dynamic markets and physical I look at completely different than trading uh, gold or silver. And as I said, if we do see some weakness, because uh, there's a lot of analysts out there that believe that we could have some choppiness here, to me, it's an excellent opportunity to add to your existing portfolio. I know when I I loaded up at about 1400, and so I was pretty happy and I've got all of that. If we see it dip back down to 16, 1650, I would consider adding to my position. Um, And that's a completely different vehicle than trading the paper. Can you expand on more of the dynamics between the physical and uh, paper markets? Because one of the things that's really interesting, you mentioned how there's the production issue, that it's just hard to create the smaller coins and bars very fast, you know, so you're gonna see shortages. One of the things that happened during the silver squeeze was there was also, it was sometimes hard to get the thousand ounce bars and we saw 
slightly higher premiums on those as well. So that was really shocking to a lot of people because it's like, wait a second, you should be able to get the thousand ounce bars. Maybe the coins and the smaller bars would be harder to get. But the fact that it was hard to get thousand ounce bars was really shocking to a lot of people. Uh, that's actually uh, surprising. What I had heard was that you could still get those in limited um, quantities, but they were available. The, the premiums went up. It was the smaller, uh, the, the one ounce rounds, uh, the, the five ounce, 10 ounce, the smaller bars that had the real demand for it. Realize that your typical investor is not buying a uh, thousand or a five thousand ounce bar of silver. That's, and it is really something I think that's more used for very serious investors as well as institutional players that use silver or gold uh, for manufacturing. And so it is going to go down to supply and demand. Specifically with silver, the key to that is solar panels because we look at technology and where there are uses for silver and whether or not we believe that that will increase or decrease. And the use of uh, the whole idea of going green is going to require, I think, a lot more silver than we're currently using. So you will get demand going up. And the question is, will the production mines be able to keep up with that rising demand? I don't see the demand diminishing on the industrial level. I think that solar is here to stay. And I think that it's only going to get bigger over the next five years. So that's one thing you, you definitely want to consider. Definitely. It seems like there are a lot of bullish factors kind of coming to head right now as we see increasing investment demand. And as you're saying, also increasing industrial demand as well with the green energy. Correct. One last topic before we let you go. Are there any key price points you're looking for um, for gold and silver to break above so that we see uh, the next move higher? Well, in silver, we've talked about it. $30 is the key. But before we get there, we have to see an effective close back above the 50-day moving average, which I believe is at around uh, 28, 28 and a half. So we're not that far away from it. In terms of gold, realize that we had a, in both silver and gold, after hitting $30 and hitting 2,088, we had a multi-month correction. The low in silver was one. It actually touched below $12 an ounce. I mean, ridiculously low. Uh, with gold, it, it hit the lows of around $14.50, and then it began to come up. So we've come a long way. When you consider that the price of gold right now is still above $1,700, Silver is near $30, it's 25, 26, 27. I think that we're going to see a limited amount of downside. I don't see silver going back to 12, and I don't see gold going back to 1400. Now, will it go up? I believe it will over time, and I believe that it's going to be a stair step manner. In other words, we're not going to see these big spikes because we don't have the fundamental events behind it. And I hopefully we won't. Um, I think what really will propel these metals higher, first of all, is going to be demand. And second of all, it's going to be servicing the debt that we have incurred. It's huge and it keeps interest rates low. Higher interest rates are, of course, work against both gold and silver. So the key level is going to be $30, effectively first breaking above the 50-day if it does break above $30, I think you will see a lot of demand come in. In the futures markets, you'll get a lot of the stops hit, and that will take it higher. With gold, effectively, what I'm looking for is a solid move to challenge 1800 again. But realize, it's still at a relative to where it's been over the last five years in extremely valuable metals as a whole that have held their value even within a lot of uh, price challenges, so to speak, from August till we saw the market kind of bottom a couple of weeks ago. All right. Well, Gary Wagner, if our viewers are interested in learning more, hearing more of these interviews, they can hit the subscribe button and bell icon so they'll be notified of all the new videos being produced. And if people would like to find you, can you remind our viewers where they can uh, find you online? 
absolutely the gold forecast one word.com that is our website and the gold forecast on youtube provides you with thousands of videos that are free to watch so you can look at what we've done for the last 10 years we've produced a video per day five days a week for 10 years so we've got i think about 2,000 videos that your viewers can watch fantastic gary wagner once again thank you so much for your time and insights thank you so much for having me and i look forward to speaking with you again Physical silver and gold in your hands. Personal service, competitive prices, and zero complaints. That's Miles Franklin. Call us at 1-800-822-8080 or email us at info at milesfranklin.com.